Hi everybody, so good to have you here. In today's tutorial, we're going to turn a blank canvas into this nice abstract design you see in front of you, and we're going to do it all in six short steps and in less than nine minutes. I'm excited, I hope you are. Let's jump right in. So here we are in the Pixie Chart Editor, and the first thing we want to do is change the background color. The way we do that is simply by heading over here to the Backgrounds panel on the left, and in here we can put in our own hex codes, we can pop open the color tool and select from one of the predefined swatches, or we can open the color selector by clicking the plus icon here and manually set a color of our choice. For now though, since I have a specific color in mind, let's go ahead and paste in the hex code. For this example, we're also going to add some texture to our background. Right down here below, we can select from a wide range of textures, patterns, and background images. And in this one case, let's go ahead and select this white grunge texture. And that's it, guys. We're all set for the next step, where we're going to add an abstract background image and toggle its opacity. So, to add our background image, first let's hop over to the graphics panel here on the top left of the screen and pop open Photos. In here we can select from thousands upon thousands of stunning photos by Unsplash, and all of these photos are royalty free, which is to say you can use them, modify them, do with them whatever you please without having to worry about copyright infringement, lawsuits, and all of those, well, shall we say, not so pleasant things. Now, since we're creating an abstract typography poster today, let's go ahead and type in abstract. And as you can see, there's so much good stuff to choose from here. So play around with it, uh, give it a go. You know, that's the only way that you're going to find out whether something works or whether it does not. But for this one example, let's go ahead and select this one image. And with the image now on the canvas, we're going to hold down shift while dragging the corners to scale it up so that it covers the entire page. Holding down shift while scaling images simply ensures that we keep the original proportions in check. And now that the image covers the entire canvas, let's reposition it to our liking. And then let's head up here to the top toolbar and lower the image opacity to around 35% so that it now inherits some of the properties of the background we created before. And finally, let's go ahead and lock the image to make sure that this little thing stays in the same place as we go on designing. And that's it for step number two. Up next, we'll be placing images inside letters. In order to add images to letters in PixieChart, we'll need to use something called photo frames. To locate it, we're going to head back up to the graphics panel and select photo frames. Now, what the heck are these things? In a nutshell, photo frames are pre-designed placeholders or containers, if you will, that we can add any image to. And as you can see, there's quite a bit to choose from, but we're going to scroll down here to the letters section and simply click the ones we'd like to use in order to add them to the canvas. And with the letters now on the canvas, let's drag our mouse over the letters so as to select all of them. And then let's shift drag the corners to scale down the letters. And now would be a good time to separate these letters so that we can actually see what we're doing. Now, at this point, adding our own images to these letters is pretty straightforward. All we got to do is head back up to the graphics panel and let's close the photo frames tab here and instead select photos. And then we can drag whichever photo we like over the letter. And once we do that, you can see how it sort of snaps as we hover over the letter. And we can, of course, repeat this process just as easily for the other letters. And that, guys, is all there is to adding images to letters in PixChart. Up next, we're going to work with composition and layering to create some interesting layouts. The ways in which we can add visual intrigue to our designs through typography are practically limitless. Today, we're going to touch upon two contrast and layering. Let's start with contrast. So as you can see, our four letters for our conference poster are now exactly the same size and that's all good and fine. But sometimes adding typographic contrast can really make our designs pop and one effective way to achieve this is through scale. Since we're creating a creative conference poster, how about we emphasize the letter C by scaling it up significantly just like so. As with most other things in design, it's crucial that we make the contrast noticeable when working with scale. If we were to create only, say, a marginal difference in size between our letters, it easily ends up looking like a design slip-up rather than an intentional doing. So let's undo this action to keep the C supersized like before, and let's also place it in the very center of the canvas. 
And the way we do that is simply by heading up to the alignment panel here in the top toolbar, where we can align it to the horizontal center and we can align it to the vertical center. And with that done, let me just quickly fine tune the positioning of the other letters before we tackle the other compositional element, layering. Working with layering is another way to change the appearance of our design. Right now the letters O, N and F are placed on top of the C, but what if we wanted to arrange it so that the C overlays the other letters instead? To do this, we simply select the C and head up to the Arrange panel in the toolbar above, click Bring to Front, and all of a sudden we've created this cool effect where it looks as if we've sliced off certain parts of the letters underneath. I personally think it looks pretty neat already, but we can actually take this even further by placing some of the letters behind this semi-transparent background that we created earlier. To do that, we simply select the letters we want to place behind the image and head back up to the Arrange panel. Only this time, we're going to send our selection to the back instead of the front. So now you can see that the end continues to sit on top with its slightly brighter hues, whereas the rest of our typography blends in a little smoother compared to before. And that is how we can use contrast and layering to create cool typographic compositions. In the last section, we'll add some descriptive text to complete our poster design. To finish up our poster, we'll add a title and some descriptive text. So let's scoot over to the text panel here on the left, click the title to add it to the canvas, change its color from black to white, set it in bold, and type in whatever we want the title to be, in this case, Creative Conference. Let's also change the text alignment to be left aligned. Next, let's go up to the font menu here above where we can choose from more than 120 different typefaces. And if you don't find what you're looking for, if you have, say, a brand font that you need to use, you can easily upload your own fonts by clicking this little thing down here. For now though, let's go ahead and select the font Poppins. Then what we're gonna do is click into the text box and hit the enter key to create a line break between our two words. And then we're gonna scale it up a bit and place it here above the lower parts of our letter N. Since we'll follow more or less the same procedure for our body text below, let me just speed this up while I type in the dates and the location. We're nearly there. As the very last thing, let's head up to the graphics panel to add a thin line onto the canvas. Once again, we'll change its color from black to white. And we're also going to change the line type from the default dashed to solid. And then we'll align it to the left of our body text so as to draw a little more visual interest to this otherwise fairly anonymous part of our design. And there you have it. In a matter of minutes, we've managed to create an eye-catching abstract poster design. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, thank you for watching and happy picture charting.